are doing uh, lesson 9.4, which is volume of prism. All right, hand statements for today are, I can find volume of prisms and I can solve real life problems. So our key idea, volume of a prism. The volume of a prism is the product of the area of the base and the height of the prism. So no matter what shape you have, you're always gonna use that same generic formula, area of the base times the height of the prism. The pictures here show you a rectangular prism and a triangular prism. We've done surface area for these shapes before. Um, this time we're finding the area of the base, we're gonna multiply by the height. As we go, I'll write down the more specific formulas, but that generic formula here on the bottom of um, our picture here, area of the base times height, that capital B means area of the base, um, that's going to work for any type of prism. Okay, so let's take a look at this first one. I have volume of the prism, and I have a rectangular prism. Okay, so for my rectangular prism, my um, more specific formula here, Volume equals the area of the base, which is length times width, times height. The nice thing about a rectangular prism is it doesn't really matter what order you multiply things, just as long as you pick your length, width, and height. This problem, they don't give you any extra numbers. They only give you one of each. So we're going to multiply the three numbers that they give us, 6 times 8 times 15. When we multiply those three together, we get 720. And that's going to be yards cubed. We've switched now to volume. We're multiplying three different numbers together, 6, 8, and five, 15. They each have the label of yards, 6 yards, 8 yards, 15 yards, because we're multiplying three different values with yards labels attached. That's why it's giving us yards cubed. The volume is always cubed. It's how much it can hold on the inside. All right, this next one is a triangular prism. The triangle that the base is facing you, remember, base doesn't have to be at the bottom. On a prism, it's the two sides that are parallel and congruent. So base here is a triangle. So I'm going to be finding that uh, volume for a triangular prism. I'm gonna go ahead and write the formula down for us. Triangular prism is still area of the base times height. However, for a um, triangular prism, when you're finding the volume, you do area of the base, one half, base times height, and then we have to multiply times the height for the whole shape. I use a capital H for the height of the whole shape just to show those are different numbers. There's a height of the base. Um, on this one, that height of the base is going to be two. If you look, that points down to where the base is and that height. Um, and then the height for the whole shape is the four. You can also think of it, some people like to think of it this way, base times height times height are three different numbers divided by two. Because remember, divided by two times one half means the same thing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write out my work here for my problem. So my base for um, the triangle base is five and a half. The height for my triangle base is two. And then my height for the whole shape is four. It's multiplication, so it doesn't really matter um, what order you do that in. And then I'm going to divide by two. I'm just going to go ahead and write that all out and um, multiply it just in one step. So when I do five and a half times two times four divided by two, that gives me 22 cubic inches, inches cubed. Remember volume here, three dimensions, how much it holds. So we're doing cubic units, a little three after the R label. Okay, go ahead and pause this video and try those next two problems. Before you do, I'm gonna go ahead and write those formulas down for you so you have them on this slide. So for that um, rectangular prism, this one happens to be a cube. We're doing length times width times height. And for the volume of the triangular prism, we're doing one half base times height for the triangle and then times height for the whole shape. Go ahead and try these two now. 
Okay, let's go ahead and see um, if you did them correctly. So on our cube, our sides, length, width, and height are all four. So I do four times four times four, and that's going to give me a volume of 64 feet cubed. All right, so for my triangular prism, I'm just going to divide by my two at the end. So I'm going to do five times 12 times nine divided by two. That's going to give me a volume of 270 meters cubed. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. So this one is a pentagonal prism. I know that because if I look at the base, it's got five sides. Okay. So that means we're going to use our generic formula that we saw on our first slide there, area of the base times height. Now, if it's anything besides a triangle or a rectangle on the base, they're going to go ahead and just tell you the area of the base. So even this though this one looks trickier than the last two, it's actually easier because you only have two numbers to multiply. They give you the area of the base on this one. The area of the base is 32. They told you that with that capital B, that means area of the base. And then we multiply times the height. That's going to be our 12. All right, so now we're ready to multiply to get our volume. When we multiply our two values together, 32, times 12, we get 384 centimeters cubed volume labels are always cubed. Make sure you have that little three after your label of centimeters. Okay, go ahead and pause the video. Try these next two. All right, let's see if you did them correctly. So for number three, we're doing area of the base times height. So we're multiplying our two numbers together. We're going to do 24 times 8. And for that one, we're going to get 192 centimeters cubed. Okay, let's look at our next one. Looks like that one is a hexagonal prism, but it doesn't matter. We're doing the same generic formula. Area of the base times height. So for this one, I'm going to end up getting 144 centimeters cubed. Okay, so let's take a look at the story problem. A movie theater designs two bags to hold 96 cubic inches of popcorn. A, find the height of each bag. Which bag should the theater choose to reduce the amount of paper needed? And explain. So first thing we need to do is use our volume formula to find the height of each bag. So we're going to set up an equation. We're going to solve it um, with order of operations backwards. So we're going to start with bag A. We're still using length times width times height. These are rectangular prisms. So that's the formula we're using. They tell us the volume is 96. So instead of B, I'm going to write 96. And then I'm going to look at my length and width. So I'm going to move this so we can actually see it. Our length and width here for bag A, 3 inches and 4 inches. So I'm going to do 3 times 4. And then I don't know my height, so I'm going to write times H. So we've seen equations similar to this in the past. If you have things that you can multiply on the same side, you need to do that before you start canceling things out. So 3 times 4 is 12. I have 96 equals 12H. That's what we need there. Cancel out multiplication. We're going to divide. So we're going to do 96. We're going to divide by 12. That's going to tell me that the height of that bag is 8 inches. Okay, so my height here is 8 inches. I'm going to go ahead and write it on the picture because we're going to need that in a minute. Now we're going to do the same exact thing for bag B. Again, we know our volume is 96, so we're going to start with that. I know my two sides for the base are 4 and 4, and I do not know my height, so I'm going to solve the equation for it. So I'm going to do 4 times 4. That's 16. And then I have 96. That is going to be divided by 16. I always cancel out multiplication with division.
And once I divide that out, I do get 6 inches for my height. So 6 inches, that's going to be my answer for the height for bag B. And I'm going to write it there because we're going to need it in a minute. So that's the part for solving for height. Now we need to determine the amount of paper needed for each bag. And that's going to mean the surface area for each bag. And it tells us do not include the top base because on a popcorn bag, if you look there, there's no paper base on the top. It's open so you can actually eat the popcorn. So when we set up our um, surface areas, we're going to make sure that we only include one of the base rectangles. Okay, so I'm going to start with um, bag A. I'm going to write the A's and B's underneath it here just so you can see it since um, the way my slide is right now, you can't see it. So for bag A, the surface area, we do two times blank, two times blank, two times blank for our rectangular prisms. But for the last blank here, because the bottom, there's only one of, I'm not going to put the two times um, in front of them. So looking at my numbers for bag A, on the front and the back, I have four times eight rectangles, four by eight. So I'm going to do two times four, that's eight times eight. That's going to give me a surface area for of 64 for those two rectangles. Now I'm going to do the skinny rectangles on the sides of the bag. So those are three times eight, and there's two of them on the left and the right side. So two times three, that's six times eight. That's going to give me an area of 48. And then on the bottom, that rectangle is three times four. There's only one of them because the top is open. So that gives me a surface area of 12. So now I've got my three different um, numbers for my rectangles. I'm going to add them together. Okay, so that's going to give me a surface area of 124. And then that's going to be inches squared. We've gone back to area. So it's um, inches squared. And if you notice, I didn't really make a note of this, but above when we were looking at our height, so here, that's a height, this was a height. I didn't put inches cubed or inches squared. It's just um, a line measure, how tall it is. So it's just inches, like the length and width were inches. Okay, so now I'm going to do my surface area for B and then say which bag they should choose. So for B, I'm gonna do the same thing. Rectangular prisms mean two times blank, two times blank, and then usually the third two times blank. But on this one, since the base, there's only one of them, I'm not putting the two times in front of it. The front and the back are four by six. And the left and the right are four by six as well. I could have done four times four times six. That would have also given me the same answer. Um, but since I set up my two times blanks already ahead of time, that's how I did it. So front and back were four by six. That's um, 24 times two is 48. Left and right will also multiply to be 48. And then on the bottom, I have 4 times 4 for the square on the bottom. That's going to give me an area of 16. And then my last step here is to add those together. So when I add those together, I get a um, surface area of 112 inches squared. And they did ask me, if I go back up to where the original problem is, so I'll go back up. It says, which bag should the theater choose to reduce the amount of paper needed? Reduce means I want the smaller number. So here, which bag should they choose? They should choose bag B. It has a smaller surface area. Choose bag B because, I'm going to abbreviate here, it has a smaller surface area. Okay. Last one, go ahead and pause it and try it on your own. All right, let's go ahead and see um, how you did. So for this one, bag C has a volume of 96 cubic inches. First thing we need to do is find the height before we can find the surface area. So we're setting up the equation like we did in the last problem, 4 times 4 and 8 tenths times our height, which we don't know. So we start by multiplying the things together that are on the same size. 
So when we multiply um, those values together, 4 times 4 and 8 tenths, we get 19 and 2 tenths each. Cancel out the multiplication, we need to use division. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 19 and 2 tenths. So once we do that division, we get a height of 5 inches. Now that's not my answer because they wanted me to actually calculate the surface area. So I'm going to do that over here on um, this other side. So for the surface area, surface area, this we said was 5 inches. Okay, so now I'm ready to do the surface area. 2 times blank, 2 times blank, and then 1 blank at the bottom because I only have one rectangle that size. So I'm going to do front and back first. Those are 4 and 8 tenths times 5. 2 times 5 is 10 times 4 and 8 tenths. That's going to give us 48. Okay, and then on my left and right side, those are 4 by 5. So 2 times 4 is 8 times 5 is 40. And then on the bottom there, it's 4 times 4 and 8 tenths. We did that multiplication. In the first part of our problem, we got 19 and 2 tenths. So then my last step is to add those three values together to get my surface area. So my surface area for this one is 107 and 2 tenths inches squared. I'm still not done because it asks, should example, um, should the theater choose your bet? So compared to the last two, and I'll go ahead and go back and look, this is 107 and 2 tenths. Um, when I go back to the last slide and I look at my surface areas, I had 124 inches squared and 112 inches squared. So should they choose my bag? The answer on that one is yes. It has a smaller surface area than bag A and B. And smaller surface area, less money on that paper. bag 